Hi everybody, welcome to Butterfly Garden 23.0. This is our first video, so we just wanna take a minute to just kinda of show you around our garden and what we did here and get any of your thoughts or ideas on the butterfly garden. So we're gonna start with the other side over here. I'm gonna take you around over here and just kinda of show you what we did. All right, this is Wolverine here. He helps in the garden sometimes too by chasing away the squirrels. That's Aiden picking up rocks right now. All right, so in this area, we kind of set up as our host plant area. So we have a bunch of the tropical milkweed here, which there's a little bit of controversy over the tropical milkweed here in South Florida. So I'm gonna make a separate video to kind of go over the tropical milkweed. Um, we do have some passion vine that doesn't look too good right now, but it should come back for us. All our golf caterpillars kind of ate that down. Next to that, for the golf caterpillars, we do have the Mexican flame vine. That's not flowering right now, but they do really, really love the Mexican flame vine. In this separate box over here, we put some partridge pea. We also have a little bit of rue in there with some dill, some fennel, and some parsley. I know there were a couple of videos saying that the dill and the um, fennel shouldn't be next to each other, so I may move that out of there. Um, right now, the lavender's in there. I'm going to move that at some point, too. I just didn't know where to put that yet, so we, I do have some lavender flowers in there as well. On the ground here in front, I did put some nectar plants, just going to help bring them over to the area. So we have three different shades of the pentas there. So we have the purple, pink, the red, and the white. Um, they do tend to prefer the red a little bit more than the other two colors. And then we have a lot of lantanas there as well. And then I did set up a little watering area there with some rocks so they can rest and get some water. Aiden's playing back there by the fence. And then as we come over to this area, we do have a Kalamondin tree which the giant swallowtails really seem to like the um, citrus plants, along with some zinnias and some lollipop flowers as well. We have some cosmos right here, as well as another zinnia. That's a different type, it does get a little bit bigger. And then here, that's a mandeville vine. I put a mandeville vine in there, and on the other side, I'm hoping they'll climb up these posts and go around the light a little bit too. So we'll wait and see what happens with the mandevilla vine. We have some catnip in there as well. Some more zinnias. These actually came out really, really nice, these zinnias. Let me see if we can stop the wind from blowing it so we can get a good picture. And then we have some marigolds in the back there. Wolverine wants to be on the camera again. I have a black raspberry vine here too on the side that's kind of doesn't know it's kind of going all over the place. All right, some Sylvia I planted in front of all of these boxes. So the way I set this up is the front four boxes or so get a good amount of sun. So I put a lot of sun loving plants in those. I do have the porter weed in this one. I am gonna get another color to plant in there as well. Um, this one I did plant some uh, California giant zinnias. So I'm really excited to see those come up. And then on this, some blanket flowers in there and some blanket flowers over here, just some different shades. And then in these last two boxes, they get part sun a lot. And so I put the butterfly bush in there. They tend to do well with part sun. They don't need the full sun. They just don't bloom as much without getting that full sun, but they do seem to do fairly well with the part sun. So I did do the same on both sides with the butterfly bush there. This giant in the middle here, um, he might get to be eight feet tall or so, so I may just keep him nice and trim, but that is a giant milkweed for those monarchs as well. As we go to the back boxes here, I did not put anything in there. They do have a couple little zinnias in there right now, or um, Cosmos, I'm sorry, in there right now, um, but they don't get a lot of sun, so I may do some carrots or something back here, um, something that's not gonna really grow, or that'll grow well in the shade, I'm sorry. I do have a fire bush back here right now that doesn't seem to be blooming. We are in November right now. Um, but we did have a couple cold days lately. It's been in the 50s, like 55 or so. Exoria bushes here. And then these are gardenias in the back. We have two different types. We have a bush type here on the ground that we planted. And then we do have a tree type right behind it. And these make very, very nice white flowers that smell amazing. So we're excited for those to come up. And then we have a little fountain here and we have some fire spike in the back there, which is a very good nectar source and it does grow well in the shade. So that's really uncommon. It's hard to find a plant like that. 
So it makes very, very nice um, flowers that do very well in the shade and attracts all kinds of wildlife such as butterflies and hummingbirds and everything. So I'm excited we found that. Um, our local nursery actually suggested that for the shade to be able to get a nice nectar source in the shade as well. Alright, so that's about it for the butterfly garden. If you guys have any thoughts or questions or concerns, um, just go ahead and leave a comment. I am just going to take you inside here at the end of the video here just for a second because I just want to show you what we have going on inside for a minute. I did build this um, little area here so I can start doing some planting in here as well. And this area is all screened as you can tell. So I did, we do have some root inside. I brought this one inside because we do have a black swallowtail on here. And since we were in the 50s the other day, I did bring him inside because I think 55 is a little too cold for these guys. So he was happy to be indoors, I'm sure. And then if we pan over here, we do have a monarch, but this isn't one of the normal ones. This is actually one of the more rare ones. This is a queen monarch. So you can see he has one, two, and then if we pan around to the side here, we can see the third set of antennas. So he has three sets of antennas there. And then him, we also brought him inside. And then there's some babies. I don't know if we can capture a baby here on the video. Wait, there's babies on that plant? There is somewhere. I saw him earlier. There were two oh, of them. Oh, there's one right there. Where? Okay, let's see if we can get a good video of this guy. So he's just starting out. And we brought him inside too because we wanted to protect him from the cold weather. And then the only other thing I have over here is I planted some more um, milkweed, a different type. So I planted some swamp milkweed that you can see is just starting to kind oh, of pop up a little bit right here. There. So when these get a little taller, we're going to go ahead and the transplant these outside. Right there. Where? See? That one, that one, and then the queen. Oh yeah, there is another one right here. Alright, so like I said, if you guys have any questions or you guys think we need to do anything different with our little butterfly garden out here, uh, please just leave a comment and, and go ahead and follow and we have and more videos to come. Yeah, we have a couple plants inside we have to figure out where we're going to put too. Let me just go and do a wide angle so you guys can kind of see the whole thing too. We have a little bird feeder set up too, but the squirrels seem to climb up that little black pole and steal all the bird food out a lot of the times. But that's it. That's our little area. And like I said, go ahead and follow and we'll have more videos to come. Thank you.